Hi everyone, welcome to our part two of this new series, five Excel tricks you need to know. So our first trick that we're going to discuss today, and these all of these tricks that we mentioned aren't actually like tricks. There's nothing hidden about this. This is just simple ways to help you improve the way that you can represent your Excel spreadsheet to other people. So the, the first trick, as I said, is how to insert a progress bar into our Excel. So there are a couple of options to how to insert a prog progress bar. Uh, if you want to see a full video on this, please comment down below and I'll try and make a full video on progress bars. But I'm going to show you the easiest way to insert a progress bar. So. As you can see, we've got a project here and we've got our duration of the project and where we stand in our project timeline. So to get this done, we're going to divide our time completed by our duration. And you'll see it pops up like this number and we want this in a percentage. So just at the top here, in your number section, we're going to change it to a percentage and we are going to auto fill this section. So from here, we've got all our percentages. And if you change your values here, everything will change on that side. Everybody understands that. So I'm going to select my data here. I'm going to head over to the conditional formatting in our ribbon. And I'm just going to click on this data bars. And as you can see, there are a couple of options. You've got a gradient fill here and you've got a solid fill. So I'm just going to go for the solid fill. And there you have your progress bar. So I am just going to change a couple of options here just to see as I change all of these progress bars actually change with it. So you can see it is adaptive. So you work on your data. And on the other side, you've got this great representation of a progress bar. And this you can use for projects or timelines or whatever you want to you can be creative with this. But this is the easiest way to insert a progress bar. So our next section that we will be discussing is how to add a total row to your table. And this may sound stupid, but stay tuned to see what I mean. So I've got this data set. It's not the largest data set in the world, but I'll get my point to you. So I want to put all of this into a table. And there's two options for this. I can press Control T, and then it will ask me to create a table and where the data for my table is. Now, if I press OK, you'll see everything has been added into this table. If the other option is the standard way to do this is to go to the insert tab at the top of your ribbon and to head over to a table, then exactly the same thing will appear. So I'm just going to click OK. Everything is in a table. And if you select this table and head over to the table design tab in your ribbon and You've got this ribbon for your table design, and there's a bunch of options here, but I'm going to click on the total row that you can see here. So you see the shortcut is Control, Shift, and T to add a total row. And if I click on this, you'll see a total row has been added to the table. And what makes this unique is I've got this drop down, and you can cal calculate the average, your count, your maximum your sum of your table. You can do all of these options with your total row without having multiple formulas being typed into a section of your table. You can easily just add this total row and you have all of these options. And you can even click on more functions to see what you can add. There's a bunch of options with this and I hope this was helpful. So our next tip for this video will be to add a color-coded 
project status to our drop down. So first of all, you've got a bunch of projects here, project numbers, and you, we want to achieve this format by using our drop downs. So first of all, we'll need to insert a drop down. So I'm just going to head over to the data section here, go to data tools and go to data validation. And there we'll be clicking on a list for this to get our drop down list. And we're going to source this list and we're going to type in completed work in progress and obviously not completed. So you can select this from this section, but I'm only giving this to illustrate what we are hoping to achieve. So in my list, I've put in my options. And if I press OK, you'll see that if I click on these, I've got this great drop down for the project status. So I'm just going to auto fill that all the way. Let's just get a couple of options in here just to show you how everything will look at the end of the day. So we've got our project status. And now we want to add our color scheme to this. So in the home ribbon, I'm going to conditional formatting. And under that, I'm going to highlight the cell rules. And I'm going to go to equal to. So if the cell contents is equal to completed, I want this to be this green. So I'm just going to click. Uh, there's a couple of preset options here, but we're going to for this custom format to get our own color. So I'm going to do that. And then you can just press OK. You can do the same for the rest of the rules. So it's going to be work in progress. And this will be our color that we're going to choose. Going to add that. And we're going to do this again for our not completed. And you can do whatever color you would like. I mean, there are a lot of options here. You can even go to more colors and pick if you would like that. But we're going to stick with these colors that we decided. And there you go. So there is our color coded project status. That is with our drop down. So if I change this, you'll see our colors change. And now you've got this interactive drop down that also gives you a precise color coding on where what is your status. So the next tip in this video is how to angle your table header. So as you can see, I've got this, the largest table in the world right here. And you can see this sales categories overlaps into the next column. And we can't actually see the whole header for this section. So now I want to angle the header of this table. And there are two easy ways to do this. So I'm going to select the header and I'm going to head over in my home ribbon to the alignment section and you'll see this orientation tab over here and if i click on this there are a couple of preset options uh, angle for counterclockwise vertical whatever you want so let's just click on counterclockwise you'll see the options change even for a vertical text you can do that if you are limited to space you can rotate your text upwards and then you can obviously center text also in your alignment tab uh, you can do a lot of options with the preset options here uh, but there is another option if you click on this and you go to format your cell alignment you can actually this format cells option pops up and in the alignment you can set your degrees that you want the your degree tilt of your text. So 
we can do let's do 45 you'll see it does pretty much the same as the counterclockwise i think that is actually the degrees that it's set to you know 75 you can do whatever you want to that fits your table so there are two easy options to angle your table header okay so our final tip for this video will be how to split text so i've got this list of names with people's title their first name and their last name and i want to split this up into sections so let's just do title first name and we'll do a last name as well and this is how we want to split our text and in order to do that it's a quite easy and simple uh, formula that we're going to use we're going to use text split and you'll see it asks what text do we want to split so we're just going to select our text and the way we are going to split this is through a space so we're going to just put a space in there close the brackets and if i press enter you'll see how the text has been split so the way this works is any space between our title our first name or, or our last name we will split this uh, the text from there so for instance if i close the spacing here if i accidentally typed susan becker as one word you'll see it'll recognize it won't recognize the last name it will recognize the text as a whole and it will split it from there so just make sure using this method that you when you're using a space to delimit your text that all of your text has been entered correctly so from here you'll see just autofill this it splits perfectly all our text into our titles our first name and our last name and thank you for watching guys i hope this tip was helpful and i hope all of these five tips was helpful to you that you can put up your sleeve and so that you can speed up your work in excel and you don't need to manually type everything out all the time and stay tuned for some more videos like this and please share your tips in the comment section down below and we might include it in our next video Thank you for watching today, guys. Please remember to like the video, subscribe to our channel, hit the notification bell so that you do not miss any new content. Enjoy your day. Cheers.